Joe Rogan is obviously very well respected and very well known for exposing the government and their unethical practices, along with some of the conspiracy theories that the government tries to cover up. In today's video, we have this video titled, Joe Rogan, I've been warned, prepare now. Now the reason why I caught my attention is not only because of the title, obviously this is a man who has a very large platform and he speaks about a lot of controversial things, but he also has guests on his show who are also people who are exposing the truth about what's going on. In today's video, we have an interview with Joe Rogan and Cat Williams. Cat Williams is someone who is very wide, well known in the uh, entertainment industry for exposing things. And obviously, we have Joe Rogan, who is very well known for exposing political issues. So this is going to be a very, very interesting video. But it seems as if Joe Rogan is under attack, yeah? Okay, and we're going to be reacting to another video right after this one that is imperative that you guys watch. Because after hearing what the message in today's video is... You guys are going to want, want to watch the next video that I post, okay? So let's get into this video. Make sure you guys do leave a like down below. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. Let's get it, y'all. Imagine going to a World Economic Forum party. What did those freaks do when all the listening devices have been scanned out of the room? All their phones have been put into bags and locked away in a lead vault? <laughs> what do those freaks do? Because you know it's not normal shit. You know everybody's buttoned down like that and wants to control the world. There's something involved that's outlandish that they keep a secret. That's always been the case with secret societies. I mean, that's the whole eyes wide shut thing. That there's some freak shit going on behind the scenes to anybody that really wants to control everything. You don't just want to control everything. You want what? to control everything so you can get away with some freak shit too. Right, I'm saying, but these Epstein-like characters have existed throughout history, throughout history, whether they were kings or what, like, mm -hmm. like um, human beings are human beings mm -hmm. universally, so um, e everybody is a supplier, Epstein, Weinstein, like, these guys um, knew what these extremists liked and provided it mm -hmm. and provided the way for you to ha like like um to have a billion dollars and not create a fantasy island type environment <laughs> has not existed throughout history right right Right. And there's always been those people can only kind of interact with those kind of people. When you reach that certain level of wealth and, and global success, like you're a Bill Gates type guy, how many guys can Bill Gates hang out with? Bill, Ga Bill Gates can't just go bowl and join the bowling team and make friends with the other bowlers. It's too weird. He's got to hang out with his, his kind. And the more you do that, the less you are in touch with what makes sense to say. And that's when you see them saying the most outlandish shit, because they don't recognize how regular people are gonna react to what the fuck you're saying. You know, what, we're yeah. gonna own nothing and be happy? What the fuck did you just say? Did you just say I'm gonna own nothing and be happy? So, but there's things. So who owns the things? And who, who enforces who owns the nah, things? Listen to this, y'all. Listen to what he's about to say right now, bro. Listen. And how do you do that? When you take away everybody's weapons, you're the only one that has weapons, and you get to decide who owns the things. And no one owns the things, and everyone's happy. Okay. Right, but part of what you're trying to do is you're trying to come up with something that allows you to have the power while also profiting simultaneously. Right. Right, so if it's modern religion, let's say. So in the teaching of Jesus' time, right, when they said pay the tithes, right, it was you had your whole farming plot let's say it was 40 acres and you had corn planted there right you would just you when it came time to harvest you would harvest everything except the rows that were on the fence right and the rows that were on the fence that was the 10 percent of your field that would go to people that didn't have it so it wasn't just you giving the 10 percent it was also the fact that human nature is if you were going to give people some of your crops 
you're going to pick out the best crops for you and your family, and then you'll put another pile for the giveaway. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And this took care of that, where it was all equal, and mm. the person that didn't have not like didn't that now, have yeah. to feel like they was a beggar. They could come and pick and see which corn they liked and get. It's mm. not like that you see now. what I'm saying? Well, and, that's a smart move just for harmony in the community, too then they, people have a vested interest in this farmer being successful with his crop. Right. Some of that crop is yours. But the decision to take it from that to God said, give me 10% in this plate mm. is going to make a billion dollars a day for a billion people. <laughs> Yeah. This is why Tesla has to go. Why? Because not what Tesla is saying about electricity. It's the fact that he's saying this should be free for everybody right. everywhere. Yeah, he wanted and to have aerial electricity free for everybody like radio waves. And the day that you say that. That's a wrap. It's cheaper to keep her <laughs> because we make $200 billion a day. Yeah. And we all agree universally, you should pay for this and we'll be in charge of selling it to yeah. you. And we'll shut it off if you fuck around. So for, for, us. for us to say, I think they're going to do that with cars. Duh. This is how this goes in the process. This. Yeah, that's the conspiracy theorist's biggest fear about electric cars. But it's not just electric cars. We found out it's an OnStar. It's on, uh, you know, I have a Cadillac Escalade. That, that has an OnStar. So if I'm driving, the government wants to stop me. They can just shut my car off. <laughs> it's crazy. And if you were in that business, what would you tell them they need to do in the next five years? Yeah, make get, them all like get that. better at it. Yeah, get better at that. Um, yeah. c control where they go. Control the steering wheel. Control everything. I want you to auto driving on all cars. Auto driving on all cars with third party input. <laughs> is this is this not what we would say to Tesla? If, yeah. I mean to uh, Elon if he said I want to make cars. Right. When we say okay, this well these crazy, are the bro. regulations and yeah. you have to make them like this and you. This It'd be nice crazy. if you could just control that car. Here, this is how you sell it to people. If someone steals your car, we can get it back. And you go, oh, that's great. If someone steals my car, they can get it back. How are they going to get it back? Well, they control your car. You can make you can make it uh, you can make it cheap enough to not be a difficult sale, though, Joe. Yeah, make it that, cheap. That's what capitalism is about. Yeah. Well, that's also like when you get free internet or free uh, services through Google, right? Mm -hmm. It's free, but what you're giving up is your data, your information. which is extremely. But you know what scares me and it bothers me every single time when I download an app. Let's just say I download fucking Uber or something like that, or whatever the case is. There's now a pop-up whenever you download an app that says allow this application to track your performance across other platforms. Huh? Bro, you want to track my data on Instagram? That's literally just an invasion of privacy at this point. And little do we know it's going to happen anyway. Whether we accept or deny, that doesn't matter. It says allow or not allow or whatever the case is, but... They're probably doing it anyway, bro. How you pull? So you, they're giving you something. You, you can now use Google, you, but now they have all your data, and they're just a big net that mines data. And because of that, they become <coughs> one of the most powerful entities that's ever existed on Earth. You know, there was a story that we I was learned this to find. from fishermen. Yeah. How a net works and how much it's important to get as much in as you possibly can, and that that's where analytics live and yes. that's where I'm saying this is where the DNA industry is built off of is is the fact of the future like it, it, at that same point that you're saying that we'll have those cars that do that they'll be able to predict predict crime oh yeah and step in before certain things even need to happen or they'll probably instigate you to a certain level of stress that they could indicate that you're about to commit crime and then they come in and get you <laughs> they, they won't need to real, they won't need to be that uh nefarious only because um how much joe have you looked at um you know larry fink soro state street you know uh, vanguard blackrock how much have you looked at what they're doing everything that he just every company name that he just listed control the world 
I want you to look up corporations and then their parent corporations and then those parents corporate like when i say parent corporation like i can have a corporation and then under that corporation open up an llc so what a lot of these companies do is like walt disney llc nickelodeon llc uh disney channel llc disney world llc this or da 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 so it's like corporation under parent corporation so what i'm saying is these companies vanguard blackrock george soros they literally control the world they control the federal reserve N american currency isn't based on american government american currency is actually borrowed from the federal reserve the federal reserve is an entire different banking system it's not chase chase is a corporation that works with the feds the federal reserve the federal reserve is what gives money to america that's the reason why our debt is 25 trillion dollars or some shit like that and how, what their ties are. Because we're borrowing from yeah. the Federal Reserve along with other country debt. It's crazy. Yeah. They're pretty much running everything. everything. 88% of the companies on S&P 500, the largest shareholder of those companies is either State Street, BlackRock, or Vanguard. 88% of them. And then you see their influence in defense contracts. So we went through a deal. I'm like, let me see if this these guys, this ESG, Larry Fink, Vanguard, State Street, if they have any influence on military contracts, defense contracts. If you Google the largest shareholder for... Raytheon, three out of the four top shareholders of Raytheon, BlackRock, State Street, and uh, Vanguard. It could be top three with Raytheon, but I think it's three out of four. If you go look up General Dynamics, if you go look up Boeing, if you go look up, you know, Northrop Grumman, and then you work backwards and you say, okay, how much money is that in, the, uh, in, in what these guys are doing? You'll find the amount of money we spent in our military, $744 billion on how much we're making from de defense, but you'll see some numbers saying last year is 13% of our GDP, which is around $850 billion. That's more than the next 10 combined. We gave more money to Ukraine Ukraine than Russia spent on their military last year. And when you look at these contracts, then you're like, okay, Fink is there. These guys are there. Like, okay, let's go look at Hollywood. Same thing you see there. Let's go look at pharmaceutical. Let's go look at this. And you're like, wait a minute. These guys essentially have a monopoly. Well, how big is BlackRock? $10 trillion. How big is $10 trillion? Only two countries have a bigger GDP than what BlackRock has. Assets under management. U.S. and China. That's how bad, big BlackRock is. So then they went and they started getting all these other guys to sign on and say, hey, we want you to participate with the same thing as what well with ESG. BlackRock is valued more than all of the countries other than the U.S. and China. That's insane. BlackRock is valued more than any other country other than U.S. and China. That's insane. And they ended up having, I think they had 31 signers. I think end of 2022, they got 60-something uh, signers for a total of $70 trillion of assets under management. So now they're controlling other places. And just recently, if you saw the rebuilding of Ukraine, did you see this contract? Rebuilding of Ukraine, $400 billion contract. BlackRock and Chase is helping rebuild Ukraine. They have that much control to get everybody to do what they want them to do. And then you go even deeper, which is even the crazier part, with, you know, the, the school. Like, you know, the biggest uh, union we have in America, I think it's national education, something. NEA is the largest uh, uh, union. We have three million teachers are part of that union. And you look at that and you go deeper in that with open society and who's funding it. Who's the money behind these organizations comes back. Soros, Soros, Soros. Soros. How do you Soros. feel about the kind of power they have right now to fight against them? Because this isn't like a billionaire can come out and say, I'm going to go up, up against these guys. They don't have a little bit of money. A billionaire to these guys is not nothing. They got the kind of control that can make companies fire boards. They can replace CEOs. They can replace leaders if they don't like. They have their hands so much into it where many times when people say they, the people of power, the people of power, I'm kind of like, who are the people of power? Are you convinced these guys are really running the world? Or what do you think about what some of these bigger companies are doing, like State Street, Vanguard, and BlackRock? Well, they certainly have massive amounts of influence. What do you think they're doing? It's it's The question is, how do you fight it? Like, for example, the way we fight mainstream is by what? 
what? The show that we do. And we have to be patient. It's going to take two, three, four, five, 10, 20 years. Now you have some influence, right? Okay, we can fight. There is an actual strategy on how to fight that. When you have this much, Joe, 88% of S&P 500 companies, that is a form of a monopoly. Our monopoly law in America is 50%. They say 50%. Like if you tie and say, at what point is a 50%? I've done calls with the FTC, but they say 50% is a monopoly law. Do you know how many people in America have an iPhone versus Droid? Do you know what the number is, market shares in America with iPhones? I think it's like 60. 58%, 60%. That is already a monopoly. But who's knocking on the door of Apple? Tim Cook saying, hey, Tim, you got 58%. That's breaking a monopoly law. So if a president got up and said, if I'm going to be the president, here's what we're going to be doing. We have to look at all the contract. You can't overcharge us. We have to open it up. You have to sell some of your companies. You have to let them be independent again. But every way you got to break them apart to have competition again, because we don't have that today. We say we have a commander in chief, but really the commander in chief is Larry Fink. The guy running BlackRock is really the president of the United States. If we look at the kind of influence he's got in every industry, Joe. And he's like, well, you know, I kind of feel bad. I'm ashamed that all the weaponization, the word, you know, ESG is being used. Think about, and how, think about how much these companies, like he just listed BlackRock, uh, Vanguard, State State Street. Think about George, people like George Soros, the Rockefellers. Think about how much control those people have. Do you really think that the president of the United States is making decisions? Whether it's Joe Biden or Barack Obama. Now, the problem with the Democratic Party is they're usually more influenced by these higher powers than the Republican Party. Here's why. The Democrats are literally influenced by these people to take care of the masses through change. That's the reason why they need people like Biden. That's the reason why they need people like Obama, because they're just puppets. Republican Party, they're usually more conservative. They usually like to stick closer to the roots of this country, the constitutional laws that were passed. Everything that was developed up to, up until this point of the country, they usually like to stand closer to that, right? If you have a Democratic Party, what do they like? They like change, evolution. Let's do something different. Every single time one of these people, one of these companies have a new plan in mind, a new agenda, of course the, the, the Democratic Party is always going to win because those are the people who are the most puppeteered. Those are the people that they need in office to continue to push the agenda. I mean, for crying out loud, Kamala Harris just is deciding to run for the president. And guess what she had? She had Meg Thee Stallion twerking at one of her rallies. What type of shit is that? That is clearly an agenda-based approach. They need Kamala Harris, the Democratic Party, to push a certain agenda. So they're going to do something like that. Use Meg Thee Stallion, one of the most influential female artists of this generation, to twerk at a rally. That's insane, bro. This other stuff, and Elon tweeted about the ESG. I don't know if you remember when Elon tweeted about ESG, saying the S in ESG is satanic. This is a part where even a Charlie That's the Munger... That's why I don't like Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a Republican. He's going to try to stick to closest to what he knows his country to be. They don't like that. They don't want someone going against the agenda. We need to get him out of here. We need to get him arrested. Think about what Andrew Tate said. They're going to try to cancel you. Donald Trump has been trying to... Has been, uh, canceled so many times then they're gonna try to uh what is it called arrest you put you in jail didn't he just go through several charges federal charges something like that and then the third life is they're gonna try to kill you man was just a, a an assassination attempt on his life his three lives were just used they don't want him to be president y'all who is Warren Buffett's partner says, look, I love Larry Fink, but I'm not interested in having an emperor. Some words like that he said about Larry Fink. And by the way, Larry Fink is an interesting guy because he majored in college political science. His aspirations was politics. He accidentally got into money and he learned to trade and then he lost $100 million at, at 36 years old, I think. And then he teams up with Schwartzman and they start this company. And after a couple of years, they got $5 billion under management, $8 billion and $32 billion. I'm extremely concerned about what these guys are up to. We think our president is the most powerful person. That prince is not. Because behind closed doors are going to be like, look, guys, let's relax. That guy's only going to be there for four to eight years. We're going to be all right. But now we're running the world. We control all the ETFs in America. We're controlling all this stuff. Everyone has to come through us, and we can tell everybody what to do because everybody fears not getting money from us, from being downgraded. A Tesla on ESG score is nothing, but a Philip Morris gets an A rating. How the hell the company that's Philip Morris has a better environmental social governance score, DEI, you know, not DEI, but the CEI, the, they can bully some of these guys. Guys, not let me ask you this what do you think the goal of ESG is what why do you think they're establishing 
these sort of parameters? Like, why why is ESG a thing, and what's the benefit of it for them? So Schultz said something very interesting. Schultz says, look, these guys are driven by money. They're not going to do anything to destroy an economy to lose their own money because right. they want that. I said, okay, it's a very good, Andrew Schultz. I said, that's right. a very good point. You know how sometimes Michael Jackson, you see the interview with him with kids. Oh, they're just sleeping in the bed. That's all it is. And we're just having a great time and we're storytelling. And you're like, yeah, bro, I get it. You know, it's a little weird. You got a seven, eight year old, 10 year old kid sleeping in your bed and you know, all this stuff. And I'm just, it's a little bit fishy what you're talking about here. It's not normal. Well, if you're in Hollywood and you've slept with as many people as these people sleep and then eventually you have to have other options because what else do you do? You have to try new things. How many threesomes have you had? How many this, how many that? So you start trying all these other things, and sometimes these guys go to such and such place. Why are these guys doing what they're doing? You have all the money in the world. You live in a $100 million house. You got nice cars. You go to all the nice restaurants. You meet prime ministers. You meet presidents. And then maybe there comes a time when you're looking at a couple of these guys, they're presidents and prime ministers, and you tell yourself, I'd be a better president than you, bro. How the hell am I not reading the country? Or they tell themselves, you think you're a president? You're not a president. You work for me. So the motive okay. becomes control more than money. After you have all the money in the world what's next it's got to be control or a true vision bro this is one of the craziest videos that we have watched in a while if you guys made it to the end of this video right here i want you to leave in the comments i've been warned all right because after listening to all these things it's gonna make complete sense about the video that we're gonna watch right now so make sure you guys do leave a like on this video subscribe and turn post notifications on to get notified when i upload today all right but I'm going to catch you on the next one, man. Peace.